Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here and uh, today I have a one question for you against e4 are you getting tired of playing passively such as playing French defense e6 or Karakans with c6 by giving up the center at early stage and then hitting back or are you getting tired of playing e5 where white can play all sorts of gambits such as uh, King's Gambit or the Danish Gambit or the Gorian Gambit or also you may be fed up by studying a lots and lots of theory of Sicilian and still does not come out as an attacking opening well when I start playing chess I was always wondering that is there any other, other systems apart from e5 and c5 which are equally very good and which sees the initi initiative from the white at early stages and most important thing is can I get a center uh, as a black and uh, after going through so many openings I was very disappointed uh, and I thought uh, maybe there isn't any but when I came to know about the Colorado Gambit uh, I was very very excited uh, and the first thing is this Gambit is very very aggressive a system against the white e4 and uh, it's like it achieves everything like it sees the initiative from the white it's also many lines it sees the center and black has a very free piece play and uh, in some lines uh, you get a vigorous attack against the white castle shot if the white castle shot so all in all it's a complete package against e4 and, and the big bonus is uh, I have played up till now probably more than 100 games and many opponents I found it they are very confused against this gambit they completely don't know how to react and somehow they fall into some of the nice traps of this gambit or they completely lost positionally so uh, join with me today for this wonderful gambit and learn about the tricks and traps exist in this line so let's start the opening so white plays e4 and here I am recommending a move which is knight c6 which is known as a Nimzovich uh, defense uh, what it does is basically it avoids any nasty uh, like gambit opening such as f4 which is king's gambit or d4 which is Danish gambit and uh, it's kind of inviting y to go again go back to knight f3 line where this gambit uh, will not affect anything to the bl black so here there are two good moves from the white side uh, white can play this move d4 well in this case you should uh, I recommend you should go through the theory section of Nimzovich defense where I think I personally think the good move is e5 and you should know what if what happens if white uh, take that pawn or moves further or also uh, goes go back to the main line of scotch so that you need to prepare if you are preparing uh, about this gambit anyways that is a completely different chapter uh, and if I get a time I will cover those as well uh, right now uh, let's stick to the main line which is knight f3 so it's kind of white uh, which uh, like you know is hoping that black play e5 and goes back again to the line which probably he has prepared for example a uh, modern Italian game or the roller pass and uh, everything will be fine for white but here comes the big surprise and the surprise is f5 <laughs> and to be honest with you uh, many times when I play special in blitz people here stuck for 10 to 15 seconds and they try to find out oh, oh what exactly going on and uh, what I will do in this video is first we will have a look uh, what is um, what is most likely a general response of the from the white side that if any kind of uh, gambit occurred which the opponent does not know then he tried to stay away from it rather than accepting and uh, what we will do here is first we will go through the most dangerous way to decline the gambit step by step to the least and then we'll finally have a look what happens if white accepts the gambit 
so let's go to the most aggressive response from the wide uh, by declining the gambit and the first move is e5 so pushing by uh, and white is hoping that he has more space than black because f5 uh, of course weakening the king of the black and white can grab some space on the center and now here i recommend you go d6 so now again attacking the that pawn and now here there are two lines first line which is very aggressive by white and he try to hold on to that pawn and by playing this move bishop b5 and uh, here there's a there's a come there comes the first trap in this line and please uh, remember this move because i i guarantee you somebody will going to fall for that and probably i have one around 10 to 15 games like this so line goes like this so of course black will take that pawn and white will be jolly delight because not only the knight can regain that pawn but now two pieces are attacking that poor old knight right so white will be more than happy but here comes the shock so queen d5 attacking knight as well as bishop and white maybe thought oh black has fallen into one of the cheap trap and he'll go for this line so bishop takes now of course we need to capture re recapture with the pawn and now comes this check and this is very typical trap uh, occurs at the beginners level but here it's outright mistake by white and uh, let's see how so after queen check of course you, we need to play g6 and after knight captures here comes the first move which is knight f6 so gaining a time on a queen uh there's only one logical square if we if the queen moves from the h file uh then the knight drops so queen has to stay on the h file so queen goes back to h4 and now can you spot a very nice combination or nice way to start okay uh i'm going for it right now so the correct move is queen cross g2 and now you can see there are two pieces are hanging the rook is hanging as well as the knight and uh, if white is foolish enough to take the rook but otherwise it will lost a piece for nothing then queen takes rook king goes to e2 and now instead of grabbing that bishop in the corner which is this one there is a stronger move than that and please note this move if you are going to play this line and that move is f4 and now you can see that bishop is almost hanging around so white needs to defend that bishop and there's only one move which is knight c3 which at least defending that bishop but now comes the mating attack which is and uh, please remember this line so now now comes the mating attack which you should remember bishop check so now king has only one square which is king d3 now queen f1 check king has again has only one possibility which is king d4 now comes rook check again one square king c4 sorry king c5 and now after e5 king takes 6 king takes c6 and queen a6 only move left for the white king is to take that pawn afterwards it leads to mate in one so queen b6 is a checkmate so this is a one of one of the very good trap in this line so you should remember this trap and see how the white king was dancing around and uh, we have enjoy uh to meet him okay so that was a first nice cute trap in this line if white become greedy and play bishop b5 now you should know what to do if white accept the pawn so in the second case let's consider white taking on this pawn so he cross d6 and now we should capture by the c pawn and now again there are two lines so if let's say white is playing very passively for example uh, bish, uh let's take this line which is bishop e2 uh, e5 and after castle knight f6 now indeed there is a threat of e e4 so white needs to stop that so after d3 we have this move d4 d5 and now you can see our three pawn are covering the center and how often you get this kind of structure against white and especially against e4 in fact i i don't remember much openings which give give you that much advantage 
see how much centers we are covering and not only that our simple planning is bishop is coming to d6 and then we castle and then we have automatic king side attack starting with f5 probably uh, i don't know but there are many ways you can do it right so it's almost you are equal or more than equal at this point so that is one of the line if white plays very very passively so let's see a line where white plays aggressively so white plays knight c3 and after our e5 white played uh, okay instead of d4 if white is foolish enough to play bishop c4 which looks like a logical move uh, because the f file has been opened so it's very logical to play bishop c4 but after e5 e4 that poor old knight does not have any good squares so knight has to go back and uh, white is next sorry black is next is playing knight f6 and d d5 and black black is almost more than equal here or probably higher so of course bishop c4 is is not a good move so the correct move is the d4 and after d4 black should play knight f6 no need to hurry or push your e pawns uh, right now is need to carry on the development so after knight f6 the simple line goes like this so uh, white queen play d5 and after knight b4 uh, this is one of my game uh, which i played on the internet it went on like that so after knight b4 he give me a check my opponent give me a check so i block with the bishop and after bishop takes queen takes and a3 my knight nicely drop backs to a6 where it can it can comes to either c5 or c7 depending on the scenario so for example in this game my opponent castle and after bishop e7 he come out with the knight g4 which at first sight looks that uh, e6 square is very 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 on the very much on the card with the knight but i can nicely cover that square again by with my knight knight to c7 and after uh, queen d3 castle uh, i there is a long game happen which I initially i won but you can see black has th those two pawns uh, e pawn e5 and f5 which covering the whole center and that is more than equal here at this stage black and in a moment i can kick that knight away and then my pawns are rolling so see again black is covering the center and uh, again this opening turns out very well here okay moving on so that was all about the e5 push okay if uh, if there are other ways where white does not need to push that pawn white can go for the second line which is starts like this so knight to c3 and of course white is developing but he has seized the center and this is one of the very good line where black get a good center over out of it so let's see how the black achieve this so after f cross e knight cross e we play d4 and most logical square for knight is knight g3 and after e5 again we have the center and uh, a simple line can be goes like this so after bishop b5 we play bishop g4 and after h3 we simply lop up that knight and after queen takes we play knight f6 and uh, if your opponent feeling aggressive he might try this move knight h4 knight h5 but after very simple move queen d6 knight takes pawn takes and queen h5 check looks like we are disturbing the castling but there is no issues because black can simply play queen d7 and in next moves the rook can come out to d8 and king goes back again to c8 and he tends to move as an artificial castle and look at the center we have nice three pawn center where white does not have any center and we have almost a very good game from here so that is uh, against knight c3 now there is another line where white completely gambits the point which starts like this so bishop to c4 that's the line but here uh, i think this is the worst scenario uh, worst scenario for the white side because and this is very simple to play as a black because we have a very simple reply f cross e now if knight g5 uh, i don't believe this because after d5 uh, black is almost very well placed here so uh, the main line goes like this so bishop takes uh, g8 
here we will continue like this so e cross f3 and after bishop d5 f cross g2 and after bishop cross g2 g6 have a look our planning is very simple bishop g7 castling on the king side and we can seize the center by playing e, either e5 or d5 depending on the situation and the main drawback for the white is see those pawns h2 and f2 they are very very weak and uh, that can be a big asset for us in even in the end game so uh, see the opening it's turn out it's turn out very very well and uh, if your opponent is refu refuting this gambit uh, we should be very happy because we're getting a very very good initiative as well as the big center so finally let's see what happens if after this moves uh, why accept the gambit so e cross f5 well here you should play d5 so our first priority is to regain that pawn by uh, capturing with the bishop now if white is uh, white wants to try to hang on to that pawn then he might be feel he might comes under different kind of tactics so let's say first white is try to hang on to that pawn so by playing bishop to d3 well here very simple way diffuses to play knight at 6 so again attacking that pawn and if white plays now knight to h4 that comes a very good tactic so e5 so please note uh, black white cannot take with the end person because the knight is hanging so very obvious response is to queen check to f7 and uh, after such a move like knight to c3 we have another amazing move which is g6 and first side or on the first side it looks like a suicidal because there is f pawn and you giving f pawn a whole space but there is a big tactics let's say if white is foolish enough to take that f cross g6 then after h cross g6 you can see that poor knight is hanging so that is not possible and if queen goes away for example queen goes to g4 of course he needs to remain in contact with the knight because right now knight is hanging so in this case again there is a very good one good move uh, i give you a few seconds can you spot amazing move over here okay the good move is this move g5 and now look at that poor knight it has only one square which is f3 and after the knight goes back to h3 we have e4 and the two pieces are hanging and in one of my game my opponent uh, took this pawn by bishop he thought that he is gaining a two pawn from the bishop but to his horror after this move he he probably think the he probably realized the situation is getting worse and the correct move over here is h4 and look at now forget about the bishop now queen is look like it's a trap and uh, let's say if the queen goes over here then we have more time on the queen by playing bishop to d6 and after queen only square which is h3 we take this bishop and again we are looming the threats like uh, g4 so white does not have any time to capture on that e pawn and it's a disgusting position for the white so black will have all kind of funds okay so that was first option when white is trying to hang on to that pawn with bishop d3 let's took the second option where it hang on to the pawn another way so knight to h4 straight away intending queen h5 check in this case we are playing again knight at 6 and after queen h4 queen h5 check we play g6 and uh, this amazingly turns out very well for black it's a, it's a sacrifice it's a pawn sacrifices so after f cross g h cross g and here there are again two options if knight cross g6 then we have this move bishop to uh, g4 and after let's say if queen goes to g5 then we have this one rook uh, to g8 and it's spinning the knight and our next agenda is to queen to d6 which will attack that knight and castling on the queen side and black has very good initiative over here uh, if the queen goes to h4 in this case we have another good move which is queen to d6 and now that knight is hanging and the check is looming so for example if your opponent is foolish enough to take the rook in the corner then that leads to mate so uh, 
uh, this is one of the good trap of uh, Colorado Gambit and uh, let's see if your opponent take here with the queen so queen cross g6 now again knight comes back to knight knight comes to f7 and now you see that knight is hanging so white has to forcefully play either g6 or if he does not want to play that sorry g3 then he has to retrieve the knight to f3 well here we'll start with the gaining initiative against the queen so rook goes to h6 queen goes back and now bishop to f5 and one of the game from here m one of my own game goes from here like that so bishop to after bishop to f5 my opponent played d4 I played again the rook g6 gaining time on queen so queen uh, goes to the h4 and after queen to d7 now you see there are few threats over here so if the knight has been allowed to b4 then c2 is hanging and if the bishop moves to the b4 then this pawn is hanging so by considering all this my opponent play bishop e3 but then I simply castle on the queen side and after the knight e3 I played e6 and after he played knight to uh, b5 I played bishop to e7 <laughs> and I think uh, there's only one move and he played uh, queen to f4 which after the bishop uh, sorry rook to g4 he, sum he simply realized that he has a lost position anyways if the queen does not trap like that white ha black has a very simple plan which uh, both the rooks are covering h and g file as I mentioned by the arrows like this rook goes over here and this rook is already on the g file and then if the white castle on the somehow white managed to castle on the king side then we have a furious attack on this h and g pawns and uh, you, you can see that there is a big initiative for the black over here and I would if anybody would like to be as a black in this position okay so that is about let's say uh, hanging on to that pawn now in most of the scenario especially in the tournaments uh, white will know all this and probably he will go through more positional play for example playing such move like d4 well here uh, we should of course regain our pawn so bishop cross f5 and uh, considering all the scenario I will choose the most aggressive one from the white side so the most aggressive one which starts like this so bishop goes to the b5 and now it's threatening to cripple our pawn so we should first of all play e6 and in one of my game my opponent play the most aggressive line which is of course the main line in this uh, Colorado Gambit which is nice to knight to e5 and uh, here uh, I played knight to e7 and which is intending to play a6 and drive away that bishop so my opponent decide to do not give me that um, that much amount of time so he first of all give me this check and after g6 the queen goes back to e2 and nicely defending the knight so here uh, as an to get an advantage there's only one move for the black and that is bishop to g7 again hitting that knight and after moves such as uh, okay in the game my opponent played bg5 this move happened but we should see what happens if white tries to be greedy and if he plays moves such as g4 where g4 does not turns out with a big deal because after the bishop goes to e4 and if white think he can trap the bishop by playing f3 here comes the big surprise which is can you spot it yep it's a castle and now if white is foolish enough to ca capture that bishop now comes the shock so knight cross d4 and now you can see the two pieces are hanging as well as the knight and black will have a wonderful position from, from over here okay so my opponent probably knows all this and he played bishop g5 so you can see now the two bishops are pinning those knights uh, but there is a good move here for the black side and which is, which is queen to d6 which is uh, right now supporting that knight and uh, and also unpinning from one of the bishop and in one of my game my opponent play bishop takes a uh, knight and after king takes takes that bishop he took another knight so I regain by the pawn and 
games continues like this so he played f4 supporting that knight but after rook b8 and c3 uh, you can see my rook suck my my h rook can go anywhere on the back rank and my then king can slot back into the g8 square and most important factor is white uh, sorry black has a bishop path and sooner or later the game will be open and that will give an advantage to the black so i hope you enjoy all these lines and especially for me this turn out, turns out very well and i hope by considering all these lines even for you this will turn out very well before we leaving i like to thank you uh, fm valeri liu which in fact the show me this line uh, i i have learned this line from his one of his video and uh, I have included some of his variation uh, and uh, some of my mine by with uh, experience by playing with this line and uh, with the help of Fritz. So I, I wish you best of luck to play this line, and you will see how enjoying experience you will have by playing this line. Thank, thank you, uh, thank you so much for watching my video. Please feel free to comment on my video, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.